Honeybees are by far the most important pollinators for agriculture. Approximately a third of the crops grown rely on cross-pollination to thrive. I don't think bees are properly recognized for the economic benefit that they give to society. I think increasingly they will be recognized as bees become more scarce and food prices climb. But here when these beautiful almond orchards, one of the most bee-dependent crops in the world, and the almond industry knows in particular that without honeybees, crops are greatly hindered. Over the last decade, honeybee populations worldwide have declined drastically. Beekeepers and scientists have been working to try to find out what's the cause of this decline. One of the leading problems facing beekeepers today is the varroa mite. These mites attach themselves to bees, feed on their blood, feed on the larvae, and transmit viruses. Varroa mites are very good at developing resistance to chemical treatments. The beekeeping industry had a couple of compounds that they used pretty extensively originally, and it's really just a matter of time before mites develop resistance to that compound. Right here is a sick bee. You can see her wings are deformed. Uh, this is a symptom of Roa and a virus called deformed wing virus. This colony is not going to make it. So even though there are bees here now, this has been destroyed by Varroa. There's all these dead larvae in here that will never become adult bees and never contribute. There's a tremendous need to develop methods to control Varroa mites that are sustainable and don't rely on the use of chemicals, allowing beekeepers to get off of a chemical treadmill. I became aware a couple of years ago of some work by Fungi Perfecti and Paul Stamets. They had some mushroom extracts that uh, had antiviral properties. So the idea then became to use mushroom extracts to attempt to control some of these viruses. The extracts we're using are coming from the living tissue of this mushroom when it was alive, called the mycelium. Now we're seeing that these mushrooms actually extend the longevity of bees. Previous experiments using metarizine fungi put the fungal spores directly in the beehive and had some success in controlling the mites. However, the fungus did not survive well at the higher temperatures, especially in the summertime. So we have a program to select for strains of this metarhizium that can withstand higher temperatures. And one of the innovative things that's being done is to actually select for strains of fungus that are more virulent against the mites. Honeybees are critical to agriculture. They pollinate more than 110 varieties of crops. But this orchard that we're standing in is 800 to 1,000 acres, and every single one of those blossoms need to be fertilized in a timely manner all at once. This research experiment that we're doing, I think it's the largest beehive experiment ever conducted in the world. 532 beehives testing the effects of these extracts in helping bees survive. So what we're doing is we are sampling these beehives to check virus levels, and then we're also treating them with mushroom extracts, which is what we're testing here. So one of the beauties of the fungal extract for controlling the viruses in honeybees is the ease of use for commercial beekeepers. They're used to handling products like this as far as mixing something into their sugar syrup and feeding it to bees. It's very simple to adopt. If our ecosystems fail, what do people do for food? And this is fundamental to saving our ecosystems. So I'm hoping that people will recognize mushrooms for the important roles that they play in the ecosystem we're just now beginning to discover before it's too late. <laughs>